okay. Oh, I've got the cat. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore him. Okay. Right. Cat, by the way, is a cat whisperer, just so you know. So yeah. really? I'm very good with cats. Oh, we have like five cats. cats around this area that we're best friends with. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah, I've got two, two brothers, a bit crazy. Right, okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to Alpha Sessions. Today, I'm really excited to have with us Magic and Kat. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Hey. So do you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yeah, um, so I'm Magic. I'm from Manila. Philippines so that's in Southeast Asia <laughs> so I'm a guitarist and a songwriter and I'm an aspiring pianist as well <laughs> and a harmonica player so yeah I started out way back what a decade ago I've been with a lot of bands uh, metal bands to be specific and then I toned down to a little bit of the blues mm -hmm. R&B neo soul kind of thing so yeah that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Kat how would you describe yourself? Uh, well, I'm Kat. I was born and raised in the Netherlands, but currently live in London. Um, and I've been singing ever since I can remember, really. Uh, I've been playing ukulele since about, I think, three years or something, four years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I've used to play some piano, but not that good anymore. <laughs> yeah. What got you into the ukulele then? Well, <laughs> actually, it's kind of that I tried to uh, learn the guitar, but I found that my hand was a bit too small for the fretboard, so I thought I'll just go for a ukulele because it's smaller. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So how did you meet each other? Can you tell us how you met and how you started collaborating together? Uh, well, actually, it was Magic that reached out to me. I made a cover of a Fleet Foxes song, um, posted it on Instagram, and he found it, and he sent me a message, and we just started chatting, and then, yeah, we... Uh, decided to do the collaboration, <laughs> the Beatles song. So how long ago was that, the, that you got in touch with each other? That was um, almost a year ago. That was way back, what, Kat, April, May, something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. something like that, yeah. It's like yeah. at the beginning of uh, when everything uh, lockdown, went bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> There's something good came out of it. I mean, <laughs> you guys are working together. <laughs> So, exactly. <laughs> got to take what you can from these times. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, Magic, it's interesting because I've seen that you um, worked with Lucy and La Mer. You've done like some, did uh, like did some work with her. How was we've actually done a session with her? It was a little while ago. She came oh. in um, and did an alpha session with Alan. So that's cool. What was oh, it like? So work, cool. Yeah. Smaller. What was it like working with her? Yeah, she was really nice. Um, she had the. Philippine tour. I think this was way back. I think last year, um, prior to COVID. So yeah. she did some gigs here. I played one of her songs, did some fingerstyle rendition of it because I was really impressed with how her songs were structured. And then um, she messaged uh, she messaged me, and then she asked if I can play with her on one of the you know the bars here. And yeah, we, we just, I went up to the place where she's at. We just practiced for a little bit and then we went on with the gig. It was pretty cool. She was really nice. Yeah. Talented person. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So what kind of, um, what kind of songs and genre do you like to cover? Uh, uh, for me, I would say um, metal back then. <laughs> right mm -hmm. now it's more of neo soul, mm -hmm. blues, funk. Um, just trying to get this variety of styles. Um, there was even one point during lockdown wherein I tried my hand on gypsy jazz. So right. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But you, would you say your go-to is metal or are you just, like you say, you're kind of trying lots of different styles equally? Right now, blues, I would say. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. And Kat, what about you? Uh, I think... My style is always a bit more indie. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of style. Singer songwriter. It's more fun to sing along with, I guess. That's the thing that I enjoy most. Yeah. Um, yeah. Indie singer songwriter. That's my, my biggest style. But I used to do a lot of rock as well. I used to have like a rock band in high school. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. 
done a bit of everything, I guess. That's cool. Yeah. So Kat, you've recently moved, is it fair to say recently moved to London? It was about a year ago you came over from no, your native uh, Holland. October. <laughs> so about four months. Oh, less yeah. than a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. How are you finding life in London? Yeah, it's nice. I'm uh, living with friends of mine in their attic. <laughs> yeah, I have to actually go up a ladder every day to go to bed, but uh, it's actually quite nice. And yeah. uh, we're moving into a different place in April near here. So uh, yeah, excited for that. Then I'll have my own room, actual room. So. <laughs> yeah, it's always good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how does the, I wanted to ask you, how does the music scene compare to your native Holland here in London? Well, I haven't been able to experience much. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of an unfair question. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what music scene? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I still have to figure that out once everything opens back up, really. Because uh, right now it's just me in, my, in this house <laughs> trying to do a bit of music sometimes. So Yeah. But were you gigging quite a bit back home then before? Uh, not much. Mm. I had a bit of stage fright, but I want to yeah. get over that here. <laughs> yeah. I think it just takes practice, doesn't it? It's just... Yeah, yeah I just lost practice. I used mm. to perform all the time in high school, but then I stopped yeah. for ages and I just couldn't do it anymore. Like, well, I, I can still do it, but I just get, I get really nervous. So, yeah. yeah. But I think maybe sometimes it's good to feel nervous because if you didn't, it would kind of mean that you didn't care, right? True. That's what true. people say. If I feel yeah. nervous about something, I just think I'm feeling nervous because I care. And it's kind yeah. of a good thing. Magic, do you ever suffer from stage fright or feeling nervous? Or I how, do, how do you manage I do. that? I do have shaky hands. <laughs> Which I... is not great for the guitar, right? Yeah, it's so <laughs> great. That's that's the problem, actually. So so how I managed to do a couple of exercises and just do push-ups and that's it. Mm. And then, you know, <laughs> it's weird. Does push-ups yeah. help with that, man? No, it's just so it's just a thing for me. Yeah, okay, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Can't try that before your next gig in London. A few push-ups. <laughs> I don't think I'll get that far with push-ups though. My arms are not do, that strong. I can maybe do half of one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah. maybe on the knees, you know, the, the yeah. girl push up. <laughs> <laughs> so um I was gonna ask you, what are your what are your main influences? What have been and what are your influences right now? Uh for me, I guess. My biggest one always is uh, Matt Corby and Jason Raz. Uh, I have like loads of memories that I used to sing along with Jason Raz's uh, albums. And I think that's how I taught myself how to sing, um, by just by trying to copy him because he has very good vocal uh, control. And Matt Corby the same, his vocal range is crazy, like high and low and everything in between. Like, yeah. yeah. So just by copying them, I think uh, I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Cool. Magic, how about you? Uh, I have another JM. So Jason Raz, I have John Mayer. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So John Mayer, um, growing up, uh, it's pretty much UK based um, metal bands. So you got Black Sabbath, you mm-hmm. got Led Zeppelin. So those were, the, um, those were my main influences growing up. But these days, leaning towards yeah, indie, blues kind of stuff. Yeah, John Mayer is top of my list, really. Yeah. As of the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. And Magic, I've seen on your Instagram, you've been um, jamming uh, to a lot of backing tracks lately. Are you finding that that is like a lot, gives you inspiration to write more original material? Yeah. Um, backing tracks, you know, the, the, the structure of the, the tracks itself challenges me to just play around with a lot of notes just try and you know make some sense out of where to put which note and whatnot so yeah um it has you know inspired me in a lot of ways and there are a lot of good um musicians who put really great backing tracks out there so what is um can you let us in on what your work what you're both working on now is there any upcoming releases that we can look forward to um, well, for me, I mean, I'm planning to release my originals. I mean, one of the songs that I'm performing today is my original, and I've never released it anywhere, actually. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, so I want us to get started on that. And uh, yeah, lots of videos of me just hanging around in London as well on my YouTube channel. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you want so- to actually um, introduce your songs? We're going we're gonna to have a listen of that. All right, so... This uh, song is called Unrequited Love. 
and I wrote it a couple years ago when I had a crush on a guy and he didn't have a crush on me <laughs> and so yeah I felt very strongly about this song at the time so yeah <laughs> Unrequited love, the love that touches all, the feeling of overwhelming joy, but also a deep hole. We all fall victim to its pull, as the high sometimes overcome, but if they're not that tall, it feels like a great fall. Unrequited love, unrequited love. Unrequited love, unrequited love. If you were to meet them, your heart would surely burst from all the fantasies you had wrapped in your bed sheets. Feels like you might die if you would never see them But everyone here knows that's only partly true Unrequited love Unrequited love Unrequited love Unrequited love The Alpha Sessions. So, Kat, you, thanks for that. That was, that was really cool. So you've got um, that original coming out. Magic, what have you got uh, in the pipeline? Um, there's a lot of songs that has been in the back burner for quite some time. So I've asked Kat uh, for some help with putting some life into it, probably some share her vocals into it. So I've sent her a couple of um, the lyrics to the songs and how it sounds raw. So mm -hmm. we're planning to actually release that sometime this year as well. Time to release in Spotify and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So how's the process? How does that work? I mean, if Magic, you send Kat like the material, then Kat, would you like want to, how, how do you put your stamp on that? Do you feel like you've got a certain amount of flexibility? Like how do you guys work together on that? Well, until now, I mean, Magic sent like some of the, the, songs that he's made and I've had to listen to them. We haven't really gotten started on it yet that much. It's uh, very fresh, but mm. um, yeah. I think basically I'm just gonna see what I think might be changing if there is anything that needs changing or whatever. If I if it maybe doesn't suit my voice in that way or something like that. And, uh, I don't know, we'll yeah. have to see. We haven't really yeah done much. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's gonna, but that's gonna be exciting though. And then, you know, that's exciting to see how maybe a song starts one way and maybe changes. Magic, are you open to that? Are you kind of like... Yep, completely open yeah. to that. Um, one of the things that we did, the first thing that we did was the cover with the, the Beatles cover, mm -hmm. right? So Kat just, you know, placed her creativity in all of those songs of the Beatles and she added harmonies. And I was like, I'm thinking maybe she can also add that in the songs that um, I wrote so I'm completely open to any changes whatsoever yeah, yeah. and then Kat sorry I meant to ask you before going back to your originals um so we heard uh that one earlier what other originals are you going to be bringing out um I've got like one complete song that's mm -hmm. actually like you know with a chorus uh, whatever bridge everything that yeah. a song usually has um, and there's a couple other like short songs like Unrequited Love. So it's like small little like kind of in between interlude kind of songs. Um, so yeah, I have to maybe see if I'm going to make some of those smaller songs into actual full songs if it works. But yeah, yeah, I have to work on that still. That's cool. And how is your, what's your songwriting process like? <sighs> Usually it just happens. Like I just have an emotion and then I always have to put myself down and make the song on that day because otherwise I'll never finish it or it yeah. just doesn't sound the same because you don't have the right emotion then otherwise so I always try to 
might have to cancel some plans if I'm in that mindset. Cancel that coffee. Break. You've got to. Yeah, run. sorry. I'm uh, I'm in the zone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 And then, so you, how does it work? You have the words first and then the, like, then the melody or sometimes vice versa? Uh, it's usually uh, the melody first, how I do it. Oh, so okay. how I often find it is I just mess around on my ukulele and I find a chord that I like the sound of and like resonates with me. And then yeah. I kind of play around with it and then I start making lyrics over it. That's kind yeah. of how my process has been up to now. <laughs> Something I wanted to ask you guys, you both played some radio shows for Chicago and New York last year. So can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, one of them, I think the first one was with the uh, Beatles Fest. So we were big in mental health because that was like the start of the lockdown, as far as I can remember. And um, so we just attended that fest and we, we played the, uh, the Beatles covers that we did. They just played it in the video. We didn't really do it live because it will be lagging on Zoom. Yeah. That's um, the only one problem of Zoom, right? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. That's it. Sometimes. <laughs> that's it. Um, so we just talked about uh, mental health and we just, you know, we were with Beatles fans um, during that time. So the Beatles fest is like uh, an annual event for all Beatle maniacs. So they have a lot of um, Zoom rooms this time, not booths. Okay. So yeah, we just entered that Zoom room. And the other radio show, it was a podcast. It's called Umami Memories. So <laughs> we just, it's, it's pretty much the same as Alpha Sessions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously it's not the same right now because, you know, there's no live gigs, but I think, you know, something, anything is better than nothing, isn't it? If you're still getting to meet people and like, get music out there. What do you think you're kind of both missing the most in terms of like from not being able to like go to gigs or play gigs and and collaborate live? What's the the thing you're kind of finding the most tough at the moment? Well, for me, I was really planning to go to a lot of open mics in London uh, to try to get over my fear. So that's something I'm really missing out on. And uh, yeah, quite bummed that I can't actually do that. And of course, going to gigs. I didn't go to many gigs because I was usually too broke. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did enjoy them occasionally. Uh, and I do really miss that feeling of being in a big group of people just enjoying music. Yeah. Magic, how are things for you over there in the Philippines then? What, what's the situation like there? Is there still gigs going on or what's it like? They're actually opening up some 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 bars i've seen friends who are already playing some um open mics oh wow um but yeah you know it's we we still want to stick to being safe so i don't as much as i want to (laughs) but yeah that's the thing that i missed um same as cat um just going to gigs just hanging out with people connecting with them yeah meeting new people pretty much and traveling that's what i miss the most (laughs) Yeah. yeah yeah But I mean, at least you're still managing to make music through this time. Yeah, you're still yeah. working on stuff separately, jointly. So just got to hope that soon things will go back to yeah. a little bit to how they were before. Um, but I wanted to touch on, um, you feel like it's important to spread joy through music right now, especially, you know, like what we've just been saying, going through lockdowns and then more lockdowns coming out and going back into it globally. Um, and so how are you managing like with your mental health? How is that managed? Like, how is that kind of feeding in to the music that you're doing? Uh, well, for me, it's kind of been a bit demot- demotivating, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I haven't really been working that much on music lately. Partly also because I don't really have my own room right now. Mm. So I don't really have my own space to like be creative and stuff like that. Um, so for me, yeah music's a little bit on a pause kind of so but I hope once we move in April that uh, that will turn around you know got because then I'll have my own little room and make it my own and stuff like that so exactly hoping for that yeah that's not long it's only like a couple of months yeah exactly it's not bad really. yeah <laughs> yeah but you still kind of feeling like inspired to to write certain things are there things that you feel like when you get your own creative space there are things that are just going to come out yeah I, I do feel that that might happen <laughs> I've been like kind of 
little bit bursting at the same sometimes I'm like oh I want to get a guitar I want to learn guitar now finally <laughs> that kind of stuff so yeah it's uh it's trying to come out but it's just a bit hard right now yeah yeah magic how are things going for you over there yeah it's crazy you know um being stuck at the house although I my work um requires me to actually go on site these days so I can still go outside but you know um, I just stick to just after work I go to the house and just read some books you know just play some music as much as I can reach out to friends just connect with them just ask them how they are you know because these are hard times even though the lockdowns kind of eased up a little bit still hard still not normal <laughs> Definitely not normal. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. No. <laughs> so, Magic, I wanted to um, ask you about the original track that we're going to hear from you now. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's called Easy Tiger. Um, it's just a song I wrote. Um, it's, it's an instrumental track, um, a song I wrote during uh, the, the early stages of the lockdown last year. And um, it's just about... It's just pretty much a conversation between um, friends. Like um, the, the 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 friend was just simply just telling the other this other friend that um, just take it easy. Everything's gonna be all good. <laughs> The Alpha Sessions. So what's been one of your um, most favorite or memorable gigs so far and why? Ooh. <laughs> I think uh, for me, it might be uh, when I went to see Bombay Bicycle Club. Like when I was, oh. Oh, how old was I? I think I was 16. My mother actually introduced me to them. <laughs> she was like, cool, you're going to love this fam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she took me to the gig. I'd never heard them uh, before. And she was like, oh, are you going to come with me to this gig? You're going to love it. And uh, we went and then I never stopped listening to them, basically. And I was like, just standing there like, wow, this is so cool. I think that was one of my first like 
interactions with like in, indie music mm-hmm. really because before that I was mostly listening to rock and some Jason Mraz but yeah not a lot of indie at that point so yeah so that was like your first gig that you went to at 16 no I'd been to like a lot of uh small gigs because okay. I grew up in The Hague which is really a music oh, okay. city like yeah my mother used to take me every Sunday to this little uh bar called the Old Mole or the Oud Mole in Dutch mm-hmm um and every Sunday they'd have free soup and then we'd also just watch a gig and I'd just chat with all the grown-ups there as a six-year-old having (laughs) deep conversations with them about life and (laughs) over the soup I love that that so everyone would just come together then and just have something to eat and then listen to music after yeah yeah we're all during yeah just the whole yeah. night there would just be like small gigs and I also performed there as a small kid sometimes so they asked oh, me wow. to come up <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Magic how about you what's your most favorite gig or memorable gig and why the, yeah the most memorable would probably be the when the killers went to Manila like oh. the killers the American band I was like oh man this is the sh- it's big <laughs> for real <laughs> this is big and, and um i was i think uh me and my me and my friend went there we were just in general admission um and um because she invited me to just come over and just see them and i was just in awe um yeah. like all throughout the concert they were really consistent like the sound that you hear in the recording is pretty much the same really for real they're that wow that doesn't happen that often yeah they were they were just so talented and they sang this song called runaways which is my favorite song of theirs part obviously Mm -hmm. from the staple mr brightside and they just nailed it like the guitars were just (laughs) were just awesome so i actually want um so we're gonna hear another song Kat, this is uh, this is one that you've collaborated both on. Do you want to um, introduce it to us? Yeah, so this is actually a song that Magic made a couple of years ago, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he has a recording with a yeah, different girl. So maybe Magic should introduce it and then I'll sing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so the, the song is called Indie Boy from Mars. It's actually um, a song inspired by the movie 500 Days of Summer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's just a indie kind of love song. <laughs> oh boy, I've got a lot of things to say about you and the outer space. Oh man, I'm talking random again. Cause when you give me this out of this world embrace, sounds upset, but I just can't feel my face. Oh man. crazy that's where it all makes sense but you are the boy from Mars oh you are something Oh, you indie boy, you, you make my wildest 
Darkest dreams come true. The Alpha Sessions. That was a great song. Thanks for that. Can you tell us about um, your songwriting process for, for that? How did, how did you work on it? So it started off with, you know, with, with a tune in mind. Um, there are times where in the lyrics really sometimes comes first and then sometimes the, the tune comes first. Yeah. It's really random for me. Mm-hmm. So there, there's just one day um, I was just walking. Um, I was just walking and I just thought of these lyrics. Um, and then suddenly I just, you know, I went rushing to my house because <laughs> I wanted to really just write them like on hand. It's quite different when you do it on your smartphone, right? When you yeah. type in the lyrics there, it's quite different. Mm-hmm. It's a different experience. So I wanted to write it on hand. And then I got stuck actually after the first verse. And then I told myself I needed some sort of inspiration. So what I did was I tried to look for one of those cheesy, um, you know, romantic movies, (laughs) rom-com movies. There's quite a few of those to choose (laughs) from. (laughs) That's right. That's right. And um, I can't seem to find the right rom-com to inspire me, right? So what I did was I went back and... um, check out this movie that I love called Five Hundred Days of Summer starring um, Zoe Deschanel. And from there on, it has this indie kind of vibe. And it just, after, you know, just uh, checking out that movie again or rewatching it again, I got inspired and then I just wrote the lyrics and then mm-hmm. came the intro. Um, and yeah, the, the guitar solo just came after that. Everything just went uphill from there so how do you both see your music evolving in the future both separately and together um well for me I I hope just to be able to play some gigs and stuff and uh release my originals and yeah together with magic also to release the originals that he's written and uh yeah I don't know I I hope someday that I'll be able to get paid for making music but it's not like the end goal necessarily Mm-hmm. Magic, how about you? How do you see things evolving for you in the future? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be just continuing playing the guitar, just try and make a lot of tracks, a lot of, um, you know, songs. Um, I actually told Kat that I'm going to be, I'm planning to actually go to London. I was going to ask you that. I was like, when are you coming <laughs> over to see us? Because of course now, like, you know, we're, we're catching up here online, but we want to get you in the studio as well and, and see you see you in person. So you're planning yeah. to come over hopefully soon? Yeah, yeah. Once all this <laughs> thing is over, I mean, like, <laughs> it would be nice to just come over and just, just jam out and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah. Get a gig together. I'll be there Get front row. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm coming, <Yeah>. obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so, guys, you, you're pretty present on YouTube and Instagram. Can you um, just give us like all the deets, all the handles? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, for me on YouTube, I'm under the name Cat Fields, and I post some music on there and also just random videos. I feel like doing like cutting my own hair or going out for a vlog day or something like that and then my Instagram is maybe a bit weird in English but it works in Dutch it's got low line up low line but which literally translates to cat ate fries so okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> your Instagram is really easy to find though and like yeah. there's a lot of links there isn't there yeah exactly. link in the bio so that's all cool I yeah. thought I saw your video about you cutting your hair it's really brave you cut your <laughs> yourself I mean yeah. while hungover <laughs> yeah. <Total> respect <laughs> <laughs> and magic what's all your uh, info that you can give us oh so for instagram it's just jick music so that's g-i-c-k-m-u-c-m-u-s-i-c uh, and then uh for my youtube it's just paranoid 191 yeah cool I love your instagram because you've got so many videos up there it's just like a real variety can you tell me why you chose uh, that stage name? I'm just curious. Oh, uh, yeah. It's actually my nickname. Um, ah, it's okay. just my father being weird because he's really a fanboy of this basketball player named Magic Johnson. Basketball okay. legend from the LA Lakers. Right. So, yeah. 
<laughs> that's where it came from actually <laughs> and it just stuck <laughs> yeah it just stuck <laughs> yeah guys it was so lovely to chat with you thanks so much good luck with everything in the future hoping to get you both in our studio in london <laughs> fingers crossed yeah, yeah. Um, but keep up all the great stuff that you're doing um, and hope people go and find you on Instagram and YouTube subscribe and like all the videos because you're doing some really great stuff so thank you very much thanks for having thank us you, Toby. <laughs>